Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this epic TFL Cheap Jeep 150K challenge. We're going to find out which of these three vehicles is the best off-roader here and the answer of course is mine, a 2004 Land Rover Disco 2 that's been lifted and made as off-road ready as you can get. Is it better to get a TJ? or a JK. In other words, a cheap Jeep or an expensive Jeep. Going down this uh, relatively gnarly little cliff face. Yeah, I took a digger. The Jeep is better than I'm off-road. Tommy, why are we calling this the Cheap Jeep 150K Challenge? Right, so the first part of it, the Cheap Jeep, is because of this, our 2002 Jeep Wrangler TJ, which we took from ordinary to extraordinary with just a few tasteful mods. And the 150K Challenge part is because each one of these vehicles here today has about 150,000 miles, which is not ideal when you have to go six hours that way up the formidable Rocky Mountain I-70. Nathan, what are we doing today? How do you like my 1987 Suzuki Samurai, baby? It's participating in this because it is, well, technically the best vehicle here. Check it out. We're gonna do a drag race uphill. Don't worry, we're not gonna even come close to exceeding the speed limit. We're gonna have an MPG run. Winner! And finally, we're gonna go to Moab, Utah, baby. And that's coming up right now. Hey Nathan, what's the displacement of the Suzuki? I have a 60 horsepower 1.3 liter engine. I've got a 4.6 V8. I can't wait to do this drag yeah, race. This is so unfair. Yeah, and I've got a 2.5 liter four banger with an automatic, so yeah. I don't think this is very fair. No, not at all. Boys, life's not fair. What are you gonna do? But this is a problem. This isn't even gonna be close. Yeah, but I have a solution. Here's what I propose, and I think Nathan, you're gonna love this. For every 0.1 of a liter less than the Land Rover, you get a one second head start. So what does that mean? Do the math. So it's 33 seconds. 33 seconds. I get 36. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so 33 seconds, yeah. which means I get 21, and then you're gonna leave last. Under the hood of this Landy is a venerable 4.6 liter V8 and it traces its roots back all the way to Buick and what Land Rover did was it kept boring it out until it reached the 4.6 liters of British displacement, putting out, when it was new, 217 horsepower and 300 pound-foot of torque. It's also the most problematic drivetrain here because it's pretty much guaranteed to cook its head gasket if you get it too hot. So under the hood of these TJs is a four liter straight six. Except I don't have that one. I have the tiny 2.5 liter four cylinder. It makes like 120 horsepower, maybe 140 pound feet of torque when it was new. And it's made it to a four-ish speed automatic. So um, yeah, it's not gonna be a rocket ship. There's a question of manliness and reliability, and it all comes down to this. Would you rather have a five-speed transmission that's a manual, manual? Yes, and this has it. Not only that, but it has 60 horsepower, 1.3 liter engine that puts out between 72 and 76 pound-feet of torque, depending on who you talk to. Yeah, that's not great, but the good news is with that transmission, it is fairly efficient, and I will be superior off-road. As actually, matter of fact, there's less of a chance of this vehicle popping like a kernel in a microwave, like Romans. Hey guys. Hey Andre. Well, when you guys' rigs blow up, I brought a big trailer, the biggest one I could find, to bring you home. Just reap you and bring you home. Can you also keep score? Yeah, I could. All right. Uh, so first thing is the drag race. You got a stopwatch? Yeah. Heck yeah. All right, boys. I got my high-tech phone. We're gonna do a Le Mans old-school start. That oh, means you have to, yes, you have to run to your vehicle. You gotta start it, and then you have to race off when I tell you to. Yours is the closest. Yeah, yeah mine's the closest. Do you run? You run every day, right? Yeah, but you still. Yeah, do. I run. You know that? Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, get, when chased. Get in. The, get in bad line. Bad. Get in line. Oh, All right. Tell okay. So Nathan has a 33-second advantage right. to you, Roman. Yep. So right. you ready? Yep. And go! 
Sorry, little guy. Go! Oh, it is on! <laughs> okay, here we go. Come on, Jeep. He's off. Thing is, I am lighter, and provided that I'm not too crazy on this next right turn, <laughs> I should be uh, upright, which is really important. Oh crap, traffic. But they'll have traffic too. Come on. Yeah, almost wheel spin. I got three, Four two, two one. Liters of British. Go! I just, it's British. I'm very dignified, Andre. Stoplight's gonna screw me up here. But off I go. What I didn't tell him was that I'm really worried about this overheating. I've got actually a temperature gauge right there, which reads out the engine temperature. 188 is perfect. The problem with this temperature gauge is that um, it shows the vehicle being in the perfect temperature range until it gets to 240, at which case the engine blows, the head gasket goes, and then the gauge reads hot. <laughs> I'm really hopeful that Tommy, with his four-ish speed auto, will jog it on the hill. Oh boy, speaking of which, I'm gonna have to go drop down to third. Wow, it's doing great, that's 55. Nathan is in my sights, he's passing his semi, but so will I. Put hard to the floor, 4,000 RPM, it's just screaming. Gentlemen, I'm on the highway, coming to get you. Okay, I'm in hot pursuit of three really old off-roaders. If I see smoke on the highway, I'll know what happened. Yeah! Woo! I passed two vehicles. But I'm about to pass Nathan. He's in my sights, I'm floored 50 miles an hour. Tommy's coming. Hey Tommy, I think there's a cop behind you. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing 50. I'm up to 60, I'm catching up. Come on, oh, we upshifted. Don't do that, automatic. Just hold the gear. Oh, come on. 4,500 RPM. I'm pegged. I foot's all the way to the floor. And I'm going about 47 miles per hour ish. Oh, I see Tommy. I see the Jeep, he's ahead of me. And I see Tommy. He's not ahead of me that far. Nathan's about to come by. Go! I'm coming to get you guys. I'm in the fast lane. Is there any chance that Roman Singe will crater between now and the top of this hill? Yeah. Never know. Here comes Nathan. Hi, Nathan. How's it going, dude? About to pass you. <laughs> Come on, Nathan. I have certain things to say to you, but I can't say them because it's a family show. I'm finally up to speed limit. The temperature doing, Roman? I'm at 197. I didn't look down. I got so excited. <laughs> it's climbing to dangerous levels. Let me know when it's kablooey. Less speed minimum 55. That's exactly what I'm doing. It's getting steep though. Dude, I'm right behind you. You better move over. And here comes the big brick. And we're almost at the exit. I got oh, slowed no. down. No, there he goes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, pal. I'm trying. Sailing. Uh, oh, whoa! That temperature almost at 200. I better, uh, I better pull it back a little bit. It was a noble effort, Jeep. You almost made it, but lasted at the last minute. Even though it's small, it has a soft top, which is sort of behaving like a parachute. God save Her Majesty as I get off the exit to declare victory for the British. Okay, I'm here at the exit. Noble effort by the Jeep, but the little four-cylinder just didn't have enough. All right, I see the Jeep. Second yeah. place. Yeah, yeah. I almost did it, though. Here we are. I may not have won. I didn't win.
Winner, winner, yeah, chicken yeah. dinner. <laughs> Good news, bad news. Good news is what? I won. Bad news is <laughs> I got a little warm. 200, 200, 200 degrees. 200 degrees. Yeah, which is uh, 12 above 188 where it should be. So. And how did you do? Yeah, almost one actually. Oh, almost and one. You? What do you think? <laughs> The winner for this test, three points Roman, two points Tommy, one point Nathan. I'm number one. Well now it's time for the fuel economy test and I think results will be a little different, possibly in our favor. Hell yeah. Is drafting allowed? No. <laughs> no. no. It's not going to help you anyway. So as always we're using the two click method. I'm going to wait 30 seconds before I do the second click so that we know all three of these vehicles are completely full so that we get a good rating for the MPG challenge. And uh, I got a bad feeling about my big old truck. Are well, your gas gauge stopped working? What? Well, it, it worked and yeah. then it stopped working. And uh, it's, it's, it's the sending unit most likely. And you know what though, it's okay because it mends itself when it, you're about to run out of gas. Are we doing 30 second count? Yep, 30 seconds. So why do we put the cheap stuff in there? Because it's a cheap Jeep challenge, dude. <laughs> That's the great thing about old vehicles. You just put the cheapest fuel into them. Yeah. Well, that Land Rover actually requires 91. Really? Yep. I think it'll run on uh, 84 or whatever the hell we're putting in there. 85? With sticks and mud in it? <laughs> we'll see. So you guys might be asking yourselves, why are we doing this? And the answer is simple. We want to see what country builds the best off-roader. I've got, obviously, the best of Britain here. Tommy in the Wrangler is driving, I think, the best of America. And arguably, Nathan in the Samurai is driving a very good Japanese example of an off-roader. As long as I can stay in fifth gear, as long as possible, I should get pretty good mileage with this car. When it was new, these things were rated between 25 and 27 miles per gallon on the highway. I believe that depended whether or not you had the tin top or the lighter roof. So technically speaking, this is the lighter vehicle. Now at sea level, I have no doubt that the four-cylinder with the automatic would be fine, and it is fine. We actually drove this up from California, and up here, yeah, it slows down a little bit. I'm not, I'm not gonna pretend that it doesn't slow down, but it really isn't all that bad. I mean, it's pretty quiet in here. The brakes are good. The steering is good. It's not unstable. We did the lift, the two-inch lift. This is my first time really taking it out on the highway with that new lift, and it runs just perfect. You know, it's nice and smooth. No issues to report whatsoever. This big old V8. It's just kind of lazily thumping along. It's burning all that much fuel. I'm at 16.2 average right now. So that's good. And the engine's rock steady at 188. to enter Eisenhower. That doesn't sound right, does it? Ah, not only that, but I can go in a fourth gear, baby. Woohoo! Okay, made it to the top of that big pass here. Um, honestly, the Jeep is doing great. It's doing really, really well. It's been a long, long ride. This MPG challenge with the Suzuki Samurai was probably a better idea on paper than in reality. <laughs> First I'm saying that because even at now 14.6, I'm going to have the worst MPG.
Okay, so we made it to the gas station and I'm waiting for them and they haven't blown up yet So I'm kind of sad because I brought the trailer and the truck and I'm not needed yet. I'm what the heck is going on? Land Rover says I've done 18.3 mpg, which is uh, quite astounding and hard to believe Nathan, you feel your right foot with no cruise control? Yeah, um, I had my foot pegged the entire time. I, my, my leg is almost asleep. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How come none of you blew up going up the mountain? Because we were going 12 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, no, I was up to 55 at one point. Yes, uh, yeah. down the, I got lit. Yeah, down. <laughs> so I'm not needed? Not yet, at least. Oh, but okay. let's find out what the MPG is, boys. All right. This image in my head of an Englishman drinking a pint of beer and then another and then another and then another and just saying, More, come back Come on! Okay! Two clicks! Let's see what the math is. Alright, so Tommy, you just did your vehicle. I did? Andre, Mr. Adjudicator, let's just go over the results again. Yes. So, what did Nathan do? Suzuki Samurai 25.8. Ah, Land Rover Discovery yes. 2, 15.5. Ooh, all right, it's all up to you. Can Tommy beat Nathan? 32, 32 uh, is my guess. Oh. Down roll, let's I do can, it. I can tell, this is mind blowing. Okay. It, it's no Prius. All right, no, it's a Jeep. 15.6. <laughs> ah, but you oh. beat your dad. Oh. Sort of. By 1.1 1. 1 MPG. Wow. You almost identical, but by Point one. Those so, heavier tires are not doing you any favors. No, they are not doing me any so favors. Those little engines are working hard. <laughs> working really hard. This is Tommy's number right here. All right, so assign points, Mr. Adjudicator. What are we at? Three points, the winner! Yeah! Two points, second place? Yep. One point for the Land Rover. The magnificent steed is thirsty. So let's add them up. So far, we've done two challenges. So that means if I'm doing my math right, Andre. You're all tied. It's eight, four. eight, and eight. Uh, no. Four, four, and four! That's better! <laughs> better math! <laughs> That's why I'm not the adjudicator. That's why we're not accountants. <laughs> four right. points! Four points! Four points! That's pretty cool. All right, so we're all even going into Moab. Yeah, it's all up to the off-roading, gentlemen. Oh. I, I cannot believe this. All right, well, I think it's getting dark, and I think it's time we head on down the highway, and next time you guys see us, we're gonna be in Moab, and we're gonna be doing some pretty serious off-roading. So I'll tell you what, I'll see you at the end there in about four hours. I'll see you next Tuesday. Yeah, maybe <laughs> Wednesday, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, let's get going, right, let's get going, boys. Well boys, welcome to the mecca of off-roading in America, Moab, Utah. And Nathan, when we usually come here, what do we run? Fins and things. Yeah, which is kind of a medium to easy-ish trail, but not today, Tommy. What are we standing by? That right there is the Hell's Revenge Off-Road Trail. And it just says it in the name, Hell's Revenge. Are you ready? Oh, hell yeah. All right, hell yeah. Hell yeah, hell's so revenge. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, yeah, I see that. <laughs> but we need to figure out how to score this, because right now we're all tied up. Hmm. Where is our Russian adjudicator? We need a scoring system to determine the winner. How about this, 100 points maximum per vehicle. Every time one of these backs up to go around something, it's minus five points. Every time you get stuck, minus 10 points. And if you need a recovery, if you need somebody to pull you out, minus 20 points. What, what What is this? No, 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 this is fair. This is all fair. So let's talk about Hell's Revenge. It in itself is kind of a classic Moab trail and it's pretty difficult, but there are really difficult obstacles here like the hot tubs, the escalator, and of course, Hell's Gate. Should we run them? Hell no! <laughs> yeah, probably not. I think Hell's Revenge in itself will be challenging enough. All right, 
so I got the official Sand Flat Recreation Area Hell's Revenge Trail description. So they say it's a six and a half mile trail, should take between two or three hours, or in the Samurai, seven to nine hours. And the difficulty is a six on the Moab one to 10 scale, tall tires, 33 inch plus, with traction added devices are recommended. A winch would be a plus, enhanced suspension, travel, and ground clearance are helpful. Excellent driving skills required, trail not recommended for ATVs. Yeah, I don't think we need a lot of these recommendations. Well, well at least the Land Rover does. So Nathan, uh, 33 inch tires recommended. What size are those? I think they're about 25 inch. <laughs> and that was probably one new. Um, uh, why don't you tell them about what you've got and more importantly, what you don't have that was on that list. Um, I do have driving experience. I've been on this trail before. Winch? I don't have that, but you know what I do have? I've got four strapping men who can push me out of a lot of problems. Plus we have a winch on the other vehicle. Um, I have a shovel. Ready for now on our cheap Jeep here, I actually do have some of those modifications required to make this Jeep super capable up the trail. I've got a nice set of BF Goodrich KO2 all-terrain tires, and I even have a lift courtesy of TerraFlex, a two inch lift kit, which means I have a little bit extra clearance. All in all, I think I should be good to go, except for one crucial thing. I don't have any traction devices. No traction control, no diff locks, no limited slips. So I'm gonna be doing some spinning for sure. I've got the big boy here with all the big boy toys. So I've got pretty much everything on that list, including a winch. Now, the one thing that I should have that I don't have is traction control. What this Disco 2 would do normally when it got stuck is it would break the wheel that's spinning, sending power to the one that has traction. But the winch, that is, I think, my big ace in the hole. Please prepare for our departure. So you got low range? Yeah. Manual locking hubs? Yep. Are you going to air down? I've been thinking about that. These are street tires, basically, and my problem is I need every scrap inch that I can find, every bit of ground clearance I can find. So even if I air down, the shoulders aren't really there to take any abuse, right? So I don't think it's a good idea. Normally, absolutely. This takes 44 pounds of pressure, and if I drop down even five pounds, I'm going to drop down a little bit in height. I don't want to do that. So uh, let's air down, not you, me, and Tommy, and let's go hit the trail. Here we go. There, about 25. We'll go a little bit more than that. Take it down to about 20. something here guys we're in Moab there's only one vehicle that's right for Moab that is a Jeep Wrangler I mean it's the definitive Moab vehicle the Easter Jeep Safari one of the biggest Jeep events in the world happens right here in Moab Utah so yeah I think we're in the right place for this TJ Wrangler slowly is a good way to start <laughs> Yeah, that's where I needed that lift because that body was about to slam into the rock. Well done, Jeep. It's nice and easy and as slow as possible. Wheels up. Not much I can do about that except for just let the weight carry me through. Good, little Suzuki. Yeah. Not bad. Okay. Yeah. Already uh, high centered. Problem with the lack of clearance. You want to give me a push? Yeah, I'll give you a push. All right. Can we go forward. Forward. Uh, that's uh, are you beat? Yeah, I feel like I'm pretty solid on here. Let's see. Oh, yeah. All right, let me back to this trigger on this way. Ready? One, two, three. Now oh, you're stuck, dude. One, One two, oh. three. I'll just come down winch it. Okay. It'll be easy. Let's use the winch. And it looks like they're going to have to winch me backwards. Does that mean that's 25 points? No, that's 20 points down if you get a recovery team to help you. Well, I have a recovery team. 
That's what you're well, here well, for. Yes, I know. And I, my, my trailer is standing by, so when your Suzuki blows up... It's not going to blow I, up. I, I can still bring you home. This is where that warning about having high clearance was kind of important, right? Uh, yeah. Here we go, coming down. So I can winch Nathan out of here. Turn the, the wheel more, driver. Okay, you're good. Okay, that's good, stop. Look at this, D-ring. Look at that, right there. Nathan, hold on, we'll pull you back. Okay, you ready? Yep, go for it. Okay. I think I'm good. Okay, okay stop. stop. Nice. Yeah, you're good. You'll be good. You got it. You got it. Okay. Nice. All right, straighten up. Come at me straight. Straight, straight, straight. There you go. Come at me, straight at me, straight at me. You got it, dude. I think Roman deliberately wanted this thing unmodified so he could play with his winch. Suzuki triumphant! The approach angle in the second. Awesome! <laughs> okay. First issue today caused by me. My biggest worry actually is Nathan just doesn't have a ground clearance for this. You know that pamphlet's at 33s and he's got 25s, no lift. It's just not tall enough. He's just gonna keep getting stuck, I think. This, on the other hand, real good. Now, one thing I'm sure a lot of you are gonna comment on is why didn't I disconnect the sway bar? Well, I was going to and then I looked at the brake lines and if I did that, yeah. The brake lines would have a stretch to the point of braking and it would have been bad news. Oh, I'm crunching through ice. This is actual crunchy ice. Peace cake. Bit of a water hole here. Woo! Next little hill here. God, this Jeep just has such good approach and departure angles. And these tires are gripping this rock amazingly, even with open discs front and rear. Oh, I may have spoken too soon. Okay, backing up. Got to take a little bump at it. Oh, God. Yeah, that was a big hit, but we're up one way or another. I need these guys to have like major problems so I can catch up in the points. Yeah, I'm just gonna try to get a little bit of momentum. Whatever. <laughs> yes! <sighs> Whew. I scrambled some eggs, let me tell you. <laughs> this is where Tommy got stuck and this is where my traction control should help. Wheels will start to spin and the car will shunt power to the wheel that has the traction, making that look about as easy as it can be, huh? Didn't really need to work very hard there. Yeah, you know, this car, truck really, is a little tippy off-road, a little slow, a little uh, um, kind of wandery down the highway, but when we get out here, oh boy, it just comes into its own. You can just feel that deep-baked, British off-road DNA that makes this such a champion off-roader. I have to ask you something. I saw reverse lights on this obstacle. What happened? Yeah, I just took a bad line and I got a little stuck with open But dips. did you go backwards just a little? Yes, there was some reverse movement. Okay, minus five points. I'm sorry. So 95. Okay. 95. Minus five. Tommy, so there's an easy way to go up this obstacle on the hard way. The yep. hard way is... Straight up. Straight up. Uh, Andre, will this count if he just tries it for fun? Uh, no, I'll, I'll let it go for fun. <laughs> all right, this is fun. The judge says this is just for fun, so let's see if you can make up the hard way just for fun, all yep, right? Yep, let's see. Go, Rain, go. 
Very, very steep. Wow. Uh, that's yeah. fun. That's enough. You're digging, dude. You're digging. Yeah, I'm gonna do the easier way, I think. Yeah, do the easier way before you put the back. Oh, my radio fell out. Wait a minute. Your radio dislodged itself? It's not ideal. Okay. <laughs> Fixed. Fixed. Okay, good. Okay, now time to take the more maybe a uh, tame way. Oh, yes. No problem. Except they don't know where the trail goes. It's so steep. Somewhere over here. Yeah. This looks right. Whew, good job, Jeep. Now, short wheelbases are good at breakover, but they're not super good at climbing long hills. Um, first of all, they can flip, but second of all, you don't have that wheelbase to really grip onto perhaps more grippy surfaces um, further ahead of the Jeep like you would with a long wheelbase. I've been listening to a lot of Credence and John Denver and eating beef jerky. Absolutely prepared. After the tires, yeah, not so much. Stay on it. Ugh, slipping, slipping, slipping. Ugh. Sucks. Ugh, but it did it. It's like a little truck. All right, here's a POV going up the big hill. What happens is, when you start going up the hill, all you see is sky. It gets a little uh, butt clenchy at this point. I need you going faster when we start going up that hill or else I'm gonna get screwed. Nice to have somebody to leave because otherwise you don't know where you're going. Come on, baby. Woo! It's trying. there. So little grip on these tires, but the lightweight has saved my ass. <laughs> ah! I'm hanging by my seatbelt. Whoa! Stuff's a flying. I'm a flying. I've got the heaviest vehicle here. It feels like this truck shouldn't go on such a steep angle, but it did. Woohoo! And yeah, that was definitely a bit of a butt clincher. And there's one more. now and these BFGs are hooking up well on the slick rock. Now there is some ice on the slick rock, which is not ideal. If we're being completely honest. Oh wow. That is slippery. But yeah, I mean the automatic transmission is easy to use. We haven't had any overheating issues with it. The engine's running cool in this Jeep. It's just so sorted. Straight down we go again. There's Nathan. I'm really glad these brakes are working. <laughs> Front discs and rear drums, old school. Sliding a little bit. Sliding a lot more. 
This is so bad, I guess. Whoa! Look how hard my foot is pushing on the brake. I am. I mean, look. You can tell how it's. Uh oh. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is a magnificent but heavy beast. Sweet. Hey guys, I just walked up one of the sections and it's no joke, it's really steep, like 30 degrees, mile high, mile above sea level. It's not easy, let me show you. You see, way down there are the boys. Although this may not look steep on camera, it's really dang steep. Now this is what makes Moab so special. These monumental slabs of slick rock that just go and go and go. And this is a huge hill and even this four cylinder with the automatic has no problem. Come on, Jeep. It plateaus up here at the top, so as soon as you make it, you're in the gold. I have just made it to the top. Away we go. You can hear the tires all of them trying to claw for traction. <sighs> that was easy. <laughs> Let's talk about how much these vehicles cost. The uh, Jeep cost $6,500. Suzuki, $2,500. So we're at seven, eight, nine. This one was five and a half, so we're at fourteen and a half thousand dollars between these three vehicles, and that is less, less than a very used Jeep JK. And forget about new JLs; those guys are Rubicons, probably forty. You get the one that's got all the bells and whistles, fifty thousand dollars. And we're out here doing everything that those Jeeps can do. I think. Really what we're trying to prove is that you don't need to spend a lot of money to have a lot of fun. Just go out and get yourself a used Sammy or Landy or TJ and don't be afraid to come out here. It's glorious. It really is. Hey guys, we got some, uh, come on over here, we got some off-camber ice, Tommy. So what I'm really worried about is that the Jeep, or the vehicles, right? Come on over, Nathan. Yeah. I'm really worried that what's going to happen is we're going to get on the ice, and then we're going to slide, and then we're going to boom, because it's pretty off-camber, right? So traction, no traction, catch, slide, roll. Flip. Flip. Die. I think we need to kind of walk over there and scout it out, see, see yeah. what it looks like. What do you say? Yeah, yeah. let's walk let's, it. Let's walk it. Let's walk it. What do you think, Nathan? Well, I'm narrow enough to where I can stay on the upper part of this ledge. I'll be okay here. You okay? Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> so we just walked over here. Um, Nathan, yeah, sure, Nathan ended over up, here. up on his ass. It doesn't matter what kind of tires you have at this point. None of them are going to be any good on ice. It's called slick rock for a reason, right? Well, it's called slick. I mean, slick rock is super unslick when it's dry, but when it's ice covered, it's no good. So, uh, I mean, this this looks like snow. Yeah. It's not snow. Is it ice? It's a straight. It's just ice. Executive decision. Come on over here, Nathan. Be careful. All right, come on over here, boys. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Come on down, come on down here guys, come on down. So I, I have an idea, Andre come on over here. So I think we've proven one thing, that the Land Rover is the best. <laughs> well, I counted the points. Yeah. I subtracted 20 for Nathan, yeah. and I subtracted yeah. five for Tommy. Yeah. 
Yeah, so uh, it's obviously, right? It's, it's the most built up, it's gonna be the best. But more importantly, I think we proved something really critical here, guys. What? Your Jeep, well, Samurai, right, is two and a half thousand dollars. Tell yeah. me, we bought your cheap Jeep for six and a half. We bought the Landy for five and a half. So if you add them all up, that's less than $15,000, guys. Less than $15,000, and we're out here in- Having know, a blast. Having a blast, uh, you know, in God's own, playground and it doesn't get any better than that and we haven't spent a lot of money so far so, so far we still have to get out of here did you do that falling down already <laughs> that was the second time the third time i really got my butt yeah yeah hey, yeah andre will put a band-aid on my tush <laughs> andre, will you, andre? Put, will you put a band-aid on nathan's ass <laughs> no as always the russian reaper in the ram rescue rig is still here in case these rigs tumble down the mountain i'll pull them out Okay, this will be a good test of the tires. I'm gonna take a tricky line through the snow up this hill. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, KO2s, baby. Okay, this next one's gonna be a little bit more intense, I think. This is gonna be interesting. Uh, Bridgestone street biased all-terrain tires. One side. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Oh, this is gonna suck. This is a Duratrack tire, Goodyear Wrangler. And this is a really good tire. We've tested it before. It's similar to the KO2 in its quality on uh, traction. Let's see how it does. Hey, check out my uh, traction control, see how it works. Okay. What? He's using traction control computers. That's not fair, dude. That's not fair. That's uh, that's British tech for you. <laughs> other other little bit of British tech is that slight rod knock you hear. It's a handy feature. This is going to be quite interesting uh, because this uphill is very slick. A little bit of moisture, a little bit of snow and ice. This one's going to be a little trickier, but I think it should be okay. Huh. Love this little Jeep. Oh, it's got so much grip, so much articulation. Just crawls through it all. Okay, he used some momentum and there's a few chirps of the tires. Okay, now let's see how the Samurai does it. Hopefully, lightweight helps. I was a little worried. <sighs> There's Nathan using Nathan method, which is basically going to 11 and just doing it. That's that's the Nathan method. I think my kidney just got shot out of my armpit. That is so that is so unelegant and unrefined. The British know how to off-road. Hey, do you have any tea? Do you have a tea? I do. I have some tea. Do you want some? <laughs> no. Tea. So so we do it, we make it look easy. We do it slowly and gently. We do it with, of course, our little pinky in the air. So oh, keep your geez. pinkies in the air. That's the, uh, okay, that's the way of doing talking, it. He's talking really big, but let's see how it does it. The Duratrack tires are going up the mountain. Not even struggling. Oh, yes. I think I will have some. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. There it goes. It'll figure it out. It figured it out. I think I'll have some tea on the way up the hill. Hmm, quite refreshing. Yes, indeed. That is the way one off roads. Momentum. 
both of the lockers. As always, this is Roman. This is Naven. This is Tommy. We'll see you guys next time for more cheap Jeep off-roading fun. Yeah, go to TFL Car. Watch the series. We just drove it non-stop cannonballed it from California all the way to Boulder. That was crazy, dude. Crazy. That was seven and a half minutes. Okay, oh. good.